two states seem to get it right when interpreting our nation's motto of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Washington State voters passed Initiative 1000 early this month. The initiative adopts a Death with Dignity program similar to Oregon's 1997 approved policy. According to the program, terminally ill patients now have the right to control their own end-of-life care with the option of physician-assisted suicide under permitting circumstances. Throughout the rest of the U.S., though, legalities restrict dying patients in severe pain from such programs. Opponents of this medical treatment argue that a slippery slope effect could occur should physician-assisted suicide become legalized nationwide. As defined in a University of Utah published article, the theory states that vulnerable members of society would die in disproportionately large numbers due to pressure, force, or manipulation by physicians or family members. However, experts have taken careful precautions to avoid such problems. To qualify for the end-of-life treatment, patients must have less than six months to live and must meet strict requirements. In fact, results gathered by the Oregon Department of Human Services have proven that those who sought physician-assisted suicide tended to be better educated, insured, and almost always in hospice care. The fact is, suffering patients throughout the U.S. are downright lacking a human freedom. That freedom is the right to exercise control over one's life at its end and have the choice to die with dignity. If unfortunate circumstances have left one in a state of irreversible pain, it is that person's right to have access to a medical program designed to ending that pain. A Harris poll indicates that 70% of U.S. adults currently support such a treatment. With such support, all that's left is to take action and work for similar laws within the rest of our states. Only then will there be a compassionate option for those who, as of yet, remain forced to suffer by law.